a monolithic application is built as a single unified unit while a microservices architecture is a collection of smaller independently deployable services. Which one is right for you? To answer this question, make sure to stay till the end of this video. Hello everyone, this is Damien from Edureka and in today's session we are going to talk about the differences between monolithic and microservices. But before we get started, if you like our videos, please do not forget to subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss out on any updates. Also, if you guys are interested in our certification training, do check out the description shared in the link below. So without any further delay, let's get on with today's agenda. We will begin the session with a brief introduction of what is monolithic, followed by what is microservices. Then we will move on ahead and understand why to migrate from monolithic to microservices. And finally, we will move on to the topic of today, which is monolithic versus microservices. Let's start with monolithic. A monolithic architecture is a traditional model of a software program, which is built as a unified unit that is self-contained and independent from other applications. The word monolith is often attributed to something large and glacial, which isn't far from the truth of a monolith architecture for software design. A monolithic architecture is a singular large computing network with one code base that couples all of the business's concerns together. To make a change to this sort of application, requires updating the entire stack by accessing the code base and building and deploying an updated version of the service site interface. Now this makes updates restrictive and time consuming. Monoliths can be convenient early on in a project's life for ease of code management, cognitive overhead and deployment. This allows everything in the monolith to be released at once. Now that we have gone through the definition of monolithic, let us understand its architecture. Monolithic software is designed to be self-contained, wherein the program's components or functions are tightly coupled rather than loosely coupled, like in the modular software programs. In a monolithic architecture, each component and its associated components must all be present for a code to be executed or compiled and for the software to run. Monolithic applications are single tier, which means multiple components are combined into one large application. Furthermore, if one program component must be updated, other elements may also require rewriting and the whole application has to be recompiled and tested. To understand monolithic architecture, let's take an example of a banking application. The banking application website first authorizes customers, logs them into their account and enables them to make online money transfer to other accounts. There are several components involved in this entire process, including the customer facing user interface, plus services for using authentication, statement downloads, money transfer, etc. So what happens is if the application uses a monolithic architecture, it is built and deployed as a single application, regardless of how a customer uses it. Thus, whether a user access the application from the desktop or from a mobile device, the application remains tightly coupled and all the various components and modules are directly connected to each other. It may also use a relational database management system as a single data source. Finally, if changes are needed for any one component, code changes are required for all other affected components as well. Now we will look into the introduction of microservices. A microservices architecture, also simply known as microservices, is an architectural method that relies on a series of independent deployable services. Now these services have their own business logic and database with a specific goal. Now updating, testing, deployment and scaling occur within each services. Microservices decouple major business, domain specific concern into separate independent code bases. Microservices don't reduce complexity, but they make any complexity visible and more manageable by separating tasks into smaller process that function independently of each other and contribute to the overall whole. Adopting microservices often goes hand in hand with DevOps since they are the basis of continuous delivery practices that allow teams to adapt quickly to user requirement. Now let us understand the architecture of microservices. Microservice architecture, also known as microservices, are a specific method of designing software system to structure a single application as a collection of loosely coupled services. Application tends to begin as a monolithic architecture and over time grows into a set of interconnected microservices. 
The main idea behind microservices is that some types of applications are easier to build and maintain when they are broken down into smaller pieces that works together. Though the architecture has increased complexity, microservices still offer many advantages over the monolithic structure. Microservices are a set of services that act together to make a whole application operate. Now this architecture utilizes APIs to pass information such as user queries or a data stream from one service to another. Kubernetes has helped advance the cost of microservices. In the case of microservices, the user machine may be responsible for basic processing, but it is mostly responsible for sending and receiving network calls to other computers. Whenever you use an application, it's reasonable to assume that there are five other computers give or take that just turn on in order to power your experience. In the case of something like Facebook or Uber, it may be more reasonable to expect another 10,000 computers are actively processing information to enhance the user experience. Now we shall understand why do companies migrate from monolithic to microservices. In this case, we shall take an example to help you understand better. Netflix is one of the earlier, most well-known adopters. Some other well-known examples are eBay, Amazon, Twitter, Alation, etc. In 2009, Netflix faced growing pains. Its infrastructure couldn't keep up with the demand for its rapidly growing video streaming services. The company decided to migrate its IT infrastructure from its private data center to a public cloud and replace its monolithic architecture with a microservices architecture. The only problem was the term microservices didn't exist and the structure wasn't well known. Netflix became one of the first high profile companies to successfully migrate from a monolith to a cloud based microservices architecture. It won the 2015 Jack Special Jury Award due to this infrastructure that internalized DevOps. Today, Netflix has more than 10,000 microservices that manage and support separate parts of the platform while its engineers deploy code frequently, sometimes thousands of times each day. And another example we have is Atlassian Corporation PLC or Public Company Limited. It's an Australian software company founded in 2002 and its headquarters is in Sydney, Australia. They develop products for software developers, project managers and other software development teams. Atlassian followed the path to microservices in 2018 after they faced growing and scaling challenges with Jira and Confluence. They found that their single tenant monolithic architecture running on premises will not be able to scale for future needs. Now they decided to re-architect Jira and Confluence and move them from a stateful single tenant monolithic system to multi-tenant stateless cloud application hosted by Amazon Web Services. They will decompose them over time into microservices. The project was named Vertigo. It was their largest infrastructure project till date, taking two years to complete the transition to AWS. Migrating more than 100k customers in just over 10 months with no service interruption. They also committed to decomposing the services to microservices. Now let's come to our topic for today that is monolithic versus microservices. So as the first point of comparison, we have the definition. A monolithic architecture is a traditional model of software programs which is built as a unified unit that is self-contained and independent from other application whereas a microservices architecture, also simply known as microservices, is an architectural method that relies on a series of independent deployable services. Secondly, we have deployment. In monolith architecture, one executable file or directory makes deployment easier. Whereas in microservices architecture, they have independent deployable. Since microservices are individual unit, they allow for fast and easy independent deployment of individual features. Thirdly, we have scalability. In monolithic architecture, you can scale individual components. Whereas in microservices, due to flexible scaling, if a microservices reaches load capacity, new instances of that services can rapidly be deployed to that accompanying cluster to help relieve pressure. Fourth, we have reliability. In monolithic architecture, if there's an error in any module, it could affect the entire application's availability. Whereas on the other hand, with microservices architecture, you can deploy changes from a specific service without the threat of bringing down the entire application. The fifth comparison we have is development. In monolithic architecture, when an application is built with one code base, it is easier to develop whereas microservices add more complexity compared to a monolith architecture. 
since there are more services in more places created by multiple teams. The sixth comparison we have is flexibility. In monolithic architecture, due to lack of flexibility, a monolith constrained by the technologies already used in the monolith, whereas microservices architecture on the other hand is flexible. So microservices architecture allow teams the freedom to select the tools they desire. And the last comparison we have is debugging. In monolithic architecture, debugging is easier. With all codes located in one place, it's easier to follow a request and find an issue. On the other hand, each microservices has its own set of logs which make debugging more complicated. Now with this, we come to an end of this particular tutorial. If you have any queries regarding this session, then please feel free to write them down in the comment section below. Till then, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!